Have you ever played a video game and seen something like this? Contestants in gondolas rising up and down? Believe it or not, this is actually a reference to a beloved Japanese game show. What was this game show, and how did real-life tragedy lead to its cancellation? Kono terebi quiz bangumi wa up down quiz deshita. Ikimashou! Produced by Mayanichi Broadcasting System, Up Down Quiz premiered on October 6, 1963 on the NET Broadcasting Network. The original moderator of the program was actor and voiceover talent Toshiyuki Ichimura, and questions were asked by Kiyoshi Koike. The show's format was supposedly based on a radio program that Koike had hosted for MBS from 1956 to 1958 called Kinsetsu Pearl Quiz. The goal of that show was to achieve a 10-point score in order to win. Up Down Quiz adopted this same format as it was also produced by MBS, but in order to differentiate the show from its radio influences, they devised a unique way of illustrating how well a contestant was doing and how many points they had acquired. That method being these six gondolas. Instead of simply showing a score on a digital readout or a card, the scores were symbolized by the height at which the gondolas were at. For every point earned, the gondola would move up one level. Each program featured six contestants seated in their own individual gondola. A question would be asked to the contestants. The first one to buzz in earned the right to answer. A correct answer gave the contestant one point and their gondola rose up one level. If a contestant gave an incorrect answer, they would lose all the points they had accumulated up to then and their gondola would be brought back to its starting position. Getting an answer wrong also earns you a strike. Two strikes and you're out of the game. After that, contestants are forced to sit in a disqualification seat. That is until a question is asked that no one remaining in the game is able to answer. If a disqualified person is then able to answer that question, they're allowed back into their gondola. Of course, if you do manage to get back in the game, your point total isn't restored to where it was before you were eliminated. Meaning that in order to win, you're going to have to earn another 10 points. Each level reached earns the contestant a predetermined amount of money. Not unlike the money ladder on Who Wants to Be a Millionaire. Questions used on the show were many and varied. Some questions were simple trivia, like, um, uh, what's the largest desert in the world? Others were significantly more difficult, like, um, uh, Tokugawa Iyasu was defeated only once during which battle? Oh, um, Mikatagahara. I didn't know that it was in the book. But questions weren't always trivia-based. One of the show's most popular features was the silhouette quiz, wherein a celebrity guest would stand behind a curtain so contestants could only see their silhouette. The guest would then give three hints or facts about themselves. Contestants could ring in at any time and try to guess who the celebrity was, not unlike the mystery guest feature on What's My Line. If a contestant was able to identify the mystery celebrity in only one hint, their gondola would move up three levels. If it took two hints, their gondola would move up two levels. And if it took all three hints in order for them to identify the guest, their gondola would move up one level. Afterwards, the guest would join the host at their desk. Additional questions about that week's guest would be asked for additional points. The host would often bounce information off the guests in an attempt to pick their brain. Then the host would usually conduct a brief interview with them. After this, the guests might leave, but often would stay for the remainder of the episode. Another popular segment was the visual quiz, wherein contestants would be shown an image and have to identify what object was present in it. The catch being that the object was usually out of focus or zoomed in on from one side. As with a correct answer, a correct guess moves your gondola up. Many other quizzes were featured, such as the yes-no quiz, the music quiz, and even the visual quiz got an update in the 80s and became the computer animation quiz, where a digital image would be brought into focus. Again, the first person to ring in and identify the image wins the points. <laughs> As previously stated, the object was to earn 10 points. If a contestant managed to earn 10 points, their gondola would raise all the way to the top, and they would be declared that week's grand prize winner. And what was that grand prize? Well, winners received a monetary prize of 100,000 yen, or roughly the equivalent of 900 US dollars, as well as an all-expense paid trip to Hawaii. To signify this, an airport staircase would be wheeled in front of the winning contestant's gondola. A flight attendant would walk up the stairs and give the contestant a lay wreath. Then they would retire to the victor's section. Notice the Japan Airlines logo on the side of the stairs. That's because the trip was courtesy of the company. Probably only coincidence that the show's major sponsor was Japan Airlines, along with Roto Pharmaceuticals. 
whose building could be seen at the beginning of every episode of Up Down Quiz. Like with most shows that last for 22 years, updates occurred over time. Originally, the gondolas were all monotone in color. Color TV didn't become standard in Japan until around 1969. Eventually, the gondolas were given their own color. Original host Toshiyuki Ichimura left the series in 1964, and question reader Kiyoshi Koike replaced him as host. MBS announcer Mie Sasaki took over duties as the questioner. In 1975, the show moved from the NET network to Tokyo Broadcasting Systems Network. The show was still filmed at MBS Studios, but now the program was airing on the studio's sister station. This clip you're seeing right now is actually one of, if not the earliest known surviving clips of Up Down Quiz. It was taken from a celebrity contestant special. No known footage of the NET aired Up Down Quiz episodes is believed to be in existence. Very little of the Tokyo Broadcasting System aired episodes is also believed to exist. Until around 1983, reuse of master tapes was still common practice in Japan. Fortunately, most, if not all, episodes made between 1984 and 1985 are still believed to be existing in MBS's libraries. In 1983, the show went through a number of changes. The gondolas were given a modernized lit look, the show was renamed to the new Updown Quiz, and the man who'd been there from the beginning, Kiyoshi Koike, turned hosting duties over to singer-actor Teruhiko Saigo. The show continued in stride, utilizing the same format it always had. That is, until real-life tragedy brought the show to a halt. On August 12, 1985, Japan Airlines Flight 123 left the Tokyo Haneda Airport en route to the Osaka Itami Airport. Flight records indicate that 12 minutes into the trip, an unusual vibration occurred. The plane's bulkhead had ruptured and experienced dangerous decompression. Controlling the plane became extremely difficult and the vessel began to descend. Eventually, the Boeing 747 made impact with the Osutaka Ridge and burst into flames. 520 of the 524 people on board died in what was the deadliest crash in aviation history. Apart from the obvious tragedy and loss of life, JAL underwent a public relations nightmare. And because of this, Up Down Quiz suffered a great downturn. The show's ratings had already been dipping after the departure of Koike, but the Japan airline disaster only hastened the show's demise. The final Up Down Quiz aired on October 6, 1985, 22 years after the show's first broadcast. Question reader Mie Sasaki cried as she said goodbye to the audience. But a show that airs for that many years can't stay out of people's minds for long. The set was recreated and a minigame was played for both the 40th and 50th anniversary of the Mainichi Broadcasting System's first broadcast. And as you've no doubt seen over the years, the show's basic concept of gondolas moving up and down has made its way into a lot of Japanese media. To us, it may have just been a quirky set piece, but to Japan, it was a long-running quiz that defined a generation. To Up Down Quiz, we say thank you for the entertainment you provided. And may your legacy not be one marred by tragedy, but one celebrated for inspiring quiz-loving youths to literally reach for the top. <laughs> And there you have Up Down Quiz. Next time you're in an elevator with someone, you can tell them of the Japanese quiz show that literally rose to heights never before seen. Well, thank you for watching this video essay. Our next video will be a look at the largest collection of Japanese game show memorabilia outside of Asia, aka a look at all the junk that I have in my collection. But until then, thank you for watching. Please like, share, and subscribe. Stay safe out there. And remember, it's hard to see the end when you're beginning.